The very first year when I took classes in Branson, Missouri, I'd go there for a week to take lessons, and every day you had a different teacher. And the second day when the teacher was standing behind me, he saw me taking the wood off, and to get from A to B, I don't hesitate. I go, bang, go guide us. And he said, oh my God, you're not a wood carver, you're a wood butcher. And I took that as a compliment. So that's what <laughs> On my website, you'll see the signature on there, Wood Butcher John. And the same thing in here on my knives that I, I used to sell. I don't have a store anymore. I got it up two years ago. But I still get knives in because I still have between 25 and 32 people come to me for classes every week. I run five classes, and it's very down to earth, very. We try to start people off very simple things to do, like these little dogs, the owls, the little bears, stuff like this, or little gnomes, whatever people want you can do. But there are some of them that are so assistant that you're going to have, oh, I want to do that big one, like I want to do one like that. Yes, wait five years, then do it, because it, it's... They get so disappointed when they're often when they're overdone, they're doing a piece, and they get at it, they get frustrated, and they, they don't know how to do an eye, and they're going to dig a big hole, and then they, i got to come and dig out more to make the hole bigger, to make it look good again. <laughs> that's all right. But that's mainly that I have a process where they have every week a different piece to do. And over an eight-week period, they go home with about 18 carvings. Small ones and gradually bigger. So now, that, by that time, I've introduced them to five different types of carving. The chip carving, the leaf carving, caricature carving, and five altogether. And if they decide to come back for the next session, for the eight-week session, then they can tell me out of the five which one they'd like to do next. So that's very simple. Now it's your turn. It's their turn to say, hey, I'd like to try that. And I do sometimes tell them, no, you're not going to do that. And I just, you don't, you're not ready for that yet. And I don't hesitate at all to do so because I think I do them a favor by holding them back if, it's, if they're overdoing it. Different woods they use. Here is one. You can hear it. There's walnut. Jewelry boxes. You can later on here, over here. You can, but you can hear it's nice and solid wood, and you people are all familiar with wood. We use a lot of basswood, but here you get a cypress knee. I don't know if you people know what cypress knees are, but they come from the bios and places in California, uh, Florida, where they come above the water. And the uh, most places they're endangered areas are not allowed to cut them anymore because it'll kill the trees if you take too much off. And over here, these are one of my favorites. They're called wood spirits. I do them. This one's a little bit elaborate. That took me a whole day to do, but usually I can do two in a day. And then when we have classes. You go home in one day with a finished piece. That's guaranteed. Now here is one that one of my students did for me. She gave. She was about 26. She started with me. She took the first eight weeks, and when she had the first eight weeks in, she was 20 years ahead of me. It was amazing. And when you see this one here, this is called the Birdman. See, there's a man on the one side, and it's the same face, turns around, and it's a face and bird face. And she is amazing. She lives here in town. But uh, she is great. I love the new busts that I'm very much on. And some big pieces I've taken on. Like the big one is, uh, the biggest one I did was a bit bigger than your TV screen. It was four and a half foot by three and a half foot. And that's here, that's the Highway of Heroes. And that tells the whole story right from Trenton 
on the bottom here where the plane lands and the coffin comes out of the plane. And once that is done, then the priest is there, the soldiers carrying the coffin. And then a bit further up, it's the final salute. And there, from the, the snake's armor, he's given his final salute. And then you have the, the hearse going under the bridges here in Oshawa. They're on there. I did not want to forget the wounded soldiers, so I've got one with a low, lost leg and another one in the wheelchair. Then it also has the poppies on there from the First World War and the crosses from the Second World War, which is on display at the War Museum in Ottawa. That went up on uh, this last spring, because when I donated it a year and a half ago, they told me already then we cannot put it on display till the, the our war or our thing is over in Afghanistan and when all the boys are back and we set up a set pass on display for it. So that's where it's now in. The other couple of carvings I have in display is that um, the legislate, Ontario Legislative Museum in Toronto. I got two of them in there. We made a great big quilt at one time. And that goes back a few years already. That was with the 200th anniversary. When was Ontario's 200th anniversary? Anybody knows yet? But anyway, that's when, uh, when we did uh, a whole group of people. We all did things about the neighborhood that was 200 years ago before then, what was done up, and I uh, had one from a church I did from Toronto, uh, Bowmanville, and I did one from the Fish Heights, so I checked into some of the history. So these are the things that we do at my place. We usually have good fun. That's the main thing. I like to go out once in a while. I was invited over at Thornton View. You people are familiar with the Thornton View home? Well, my daughter is in there. She has MS. And they asked me if I could come and do some carving with some of the people in there. Said, yeah, I'd be glad to do it, but I don't think they're suitable to do it. <coughs> oh, yeah, they say, oh, yeah, we've got about four or five who would love to do that. And well, I said, I'll come and I'll do some carving and see how it goes. No, but they like to try. What we'll do, we'll put a helper with each one of them. Well, that was a sure help. But in 10 minutes, I had two of them had him cut himself. <laughs> so and the one took four stitches. So they out of that. So not to cancel that. So I, I don't invite anybody over to start carving here because it's just in case it goes the wrong way. And uh, so these are the things that happen in, at my place. I still have enough room for parking. I can, my place has about 12 parking spaces, all paved. So we got a nice big driveway, right close in the north end of Bowmanville. I'm close to everything, and I love it there. And so that's the story of my life up to now. Anything else I can have people help with? Ask me and I'll try to answer. They're not all wrong. <laughs> My lessons are totally, when including the tools, $225. That includes the wood and the tools, the knives and the sharpener and all that stuff that goes with it. And that will give you the first eight weeks and you're going to land up with about 18 to 20 carvings. And then the second session is $125 for the classes and then whatever wood you take and you, because I do not have a store no more, I do not sell the chisels and stuff anymore, but I do have the knives. So, and we're starting the first of March, first week of March, we start a new session of eight eight weeks because we just started January and February, just eight weeks. And we do eight weeks in the fall. Now often, when we do the eight weeks and if it's like the weather wasn't that good, they said, now oh, we'd like to keep on going. We did another four weeks. We just had four weeks through it. 
But now this novel is going to go eight weeks and eight weeks, but the, the people have a choice if they want to come back after eight weeks or not. But uh, yeah. I have... What time of day? Sorry? What time of day? You're Nine going? o'clock on Monday morning is the first class, and the second one is at one o'clock. Now, why it's nice that we have two of them on, during the day. I have people coming from Napanee, Bancroft, they come from Mississauga, and the ones that come from far away, I'll take a double shift. They come and they stay at my place, some of them bring lunch, others take a walk up to the little place there and get themselves a piece of pizza or whatever, and then it's at the nine o'clock again till three o'clock. Then they have Tuesday evenings from 7 to 9. I have Thursday afternoon from 1 to 3. And Thursday evening from 7 to 9. So thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, John. I was... uh, Door open it off again. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little something for you for your coffee. Oh, wow. thank you. And we thank you very much for coming out. Thank you. You guys want to come and have a look here? You're more than welcome. Okay. Yeah.